All right, so many of you guys have asked me to use helium in sort of the oxygen purification system just to see, you know, what that might have. So one of the properties of helium that we see is that its thermal conductivity is 0.236. Now, if we compare that to hydrogen, which has only a thermal conductivity of 0.168, you would think that, hey, you know what? Helium is going to be really, really good at potentially cooling down a system or purifying polluted oxygen into clean oxygen. However, there's a big, big catch to helium, and that's what I'm discovering right now. And that is in that other uh, thing that has to do with thermal energy that we haven't looked at too much right here, which is the specific heat capacity. So this next part here, we gotta start looking at the Calvin system. Ah oh boy, this will get interesting. So what does that mean for our radiator? Well, right down here we have many, many tiles and that gives us a certain area. And since you're inside of your pipes, you can only have one kilogram of a particular gas in that tile, then that gives you more or less how much energy you have in that tile that is then going to act as your thermal conductivity. So we start to get into a little bit more mathy stuff. It's not that bad though. So looking at this again, we have 0.14 joules of energy per gram within that tile, so we know that this right here is 140 joules per degree of Kelvin. So when we compare that to hydrogen, which has much different properties, you'll see that its specific heat capacity is 0.24 joules per gram per degree Kelvin, resulting in 2,400. So when you take that and you divide that by 140, you'll see that there is 17 times the energy that can be packed into a single tile when you compare hydrogen to helium. So in a radiator this size, there is a ton more potential energy if you're using hydrogen as compared to helium. And considering all this has to get back to oxygen, which has, well, about one joule of energy per gram per degree Kelvin, you find out that, you know, it starts to really highlight why helium has so much trouble actually cooling things or heating things up because it's just not a very dense power source in this setup. So let's move on back to the other half of the equation here. So when I'm running this experiment right here, which I've, I've had it sped up quite a bit, so it's like constantly running here just about, or it looks like it's constantly running. Although, I, like I said, I'm speeding it up 15x. You'll see the contents within this pipe right here are at 98 degrees Kelvin. Now, since we're used to Celsius, let's go ahead and go back over to that. All right, so if we take a look at the in-feed temperature here and the out-feed temperature of, on this thermoregulator, we're gonna see this problem. So on the in-feed side, what we have here is 192 degrees Celsius, so it's nice and cold, but the out-feed temperature here is negative 206 degrees Celsius. So there isn't a huge difference right there. It's not like 17 times higher than what we saw with anything that we've tested with hydrogen. So what we're having here is this thermoregulator is having a very hard time cooling that gas down as it's passing through it. So therefore, it's far less efficient. You have to use a lot more energy to cool this gas down because it just doesn't have, you know, doesn't have the same potential energy per tile. So the other half of this problem is that the gas pump here is giving off heat, which is warming up this gas in this area right here that's trying to feed it into this thermoregulator. So since this is so much less efficient and the fact that I have to use so much more power, ultimately that means I can't really reach a very low temperature like I can with hydrogen. All right, so after a very, very long time, I finally got this helium down to a temperature where it will convert polluted oxygen into oxygen, so it is cold enough. To give you an idea, I started cooling the system about 40 cycles ago, and I was also using some cheating gas with that I painted in here from the cell painter that was ridiculously cold, about two degrees Kelvin or well, maybe not exactly 2 degrees Kelvin, but it's negative 270 degrees Celsius that I fed into the system for a little bit. And you can see that this thing is still running, even though it's not even cooling anything down. <laughs> it just wants to heat up, no matter what you do. Just stop! Just stop! This is going to be the most inefficient system ever. Whatever, let's see what happens. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn on this stuff and see what happens here. I got the pump disabled for a little bit, so let's... Hopefully it won't cause any freezing damage right off the bat. Now I am running this a little bit warmer. I'm also using a gas pump that is made out of gold amalgam, which I normally used copper ore up there. 
feel like that was a, a bit of an improvement as far as output temperature goes. The other thing is I also changed the size of this. That really didn't make any difference at all, so whatever. It looks like we're getting a fair amount of uh, liquid oxygen. Though it is really converting a lot. It's just got to build up a little bit. That should happen. Alright, so I'm spending just endless, endless cycles here trying to get to a point where I can actually start pumping anything out. So this is sort of the efficient pump setup that I had last time. It would pump things out at 20 kilograms intervals. However, I just don't think that's going to work. So I might just get rid of my thermal switch altogether and just run this pump on. You know, any liquid gets down there, we'll pump it out. It's less efficient, but at least we'll be able to get some results. Meanwhile, I've spent day after day thus far burning up 250 plus kilojoules right there, which is a lot. All right, I can now generate enough power to keep things going constantly. So I have a pump going and a thermal regulator constantly running here. I should be able to start my test. All right, so my in-feed temperature, 167. Then it goes up to 168 every once in a while. Oh, no, now it doesn't go up to 168 anymore. I think my system is warming up. <laughs> There's like nothing I can do. I'm not generating any liquid oxygen, no matter how hard I, I work this. No, it's getting warmer. So here's what I gotta do. I gotta use a second thermal regulator. So I'm gonna get rid of some of this stuff. I'm just gonna use two thermal regulators now. <laughs> what the game? I didn't say do all that. All right, in and out. I'm using all abyssalite or absolite, depending on however you want me to pronounce that. Let's see how this works. So it should build up one thermoregulator and then run on off into the second one. Or it could sit there and not build a tile. Okay. There we go. So the temperature coming out of this is now nice and cold. I should be able to get something out of it. There we go, finally getting something. So I'm gonna start this test on one, uh, four, four, three. That's what I'm gonna start it. Oh my gosh, this thing is drawing so much power, it's killing three batteries in a night. Did I say four, four, three? Because it's, that's not gonna work. All right, four, four, five. <laughs> this is such a hard system to run. All right, so who's who's ready for the worst results ever? Here we go. So this system here produced on average 36.46 kilograms of oxygen a day at a ridiculous result of 404 kilojoules of energy used. <laughs> that results in 18.5 watts per kilogram of oxygen way higher than anything else I've tested. My next worst result was 2.07 to give you an idea. So what does that actually work out with? So 18.49 divided by, let's say 1.92. 9.6, are you kidding me? <laughs> and speaking of like troublesomes, look at the temperature of this now. It's now negative 161 degrees Celsius. So this thing has continued to warm up. Like, it simply isn't staying cool. So there you have it guys, using helium for the method of oxygen purification is just not really gonna work. And it also, I mean, it doesn't really make sense. I mean, once you started to see that thermal specific heat capacity right there, it started to make a little bit more sense. Not to mention the gas pipes themselves are still made out of the same material. So unless you could find a way that helium here is going to get really, really cold, super easy, and then somehow force these gas pipes to be much, much colder, it just isn't, it's, it's not feasible. So I went into this episode thinking, yeah, this is probably going to work out, but as it turns out, mm, no, not so much. Thank you guys for the recommendation, though. It was really interesting to see that, and we got to see for the first time what difference that real specific heat capacity made. Up until now, that really hasn't made much of a difference, but here we can see 
it made a, it made a huge difference. So thank you guys for the recommendation, and let me know what you thought about this video down there in the comment section below. If you got some recommendations for me, you can also leave them down there as well. Thank you guys for all of your support recently. It's been absolutely awesome, and if I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.